Well, hello, do come in. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, enough of that nonsense. You obviously can tell what I'm up to here, can't you? We're making a Santa suit. Now, obviously, huh, my wife's going to do all that stuff. It's not all done by elves, you know. Okay, so this is the Santa buckle that I have designed in Tinkercad. Now, there's a big whole hoo-ha about Onshleep, which I have used, which was very much my preferred weapon. But uh, they're saying that, you know, you can't use it for commercial stuff unless you've paid for the license. So it is free to use for sort of experimentation and hobbying and stuff but that doesn't really suit me so um i am using fusion 360 but actually for a project like this where i started was tinkercad in terms of 3d design for 3d printing and it's great and for something like this there are some things that i would like to have been able to do like on these edges here it would be nice to have a chamfer or a fillet so by the way if you're in perspective view uh you say oh my goodness that that looks strange uh, you can never really see what's going on because it's trying to make a more realistic view but uh, orthographic view is the way to go if you're trying to actually design stuff because everything is the same size no matter how far away it is from the camera whereas with perspective if it's near it's large and if it's far it's small so this part of the buckle is much larger than that part of the buckle even though they're the same dimensions okay a little point there right moving on so how did i design this um the whole thing in tinkercad is to take these basic shapes and combine them um, and so you've got these tools so this we can now ungroup and you can see oh okay so there are various things that i've combined here so we've got this which is a hole um bit spooky uh, but it's very practical what I, all i'm doing is to trim away the bottom part here with that hole um, then I've got these components. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide various things. Make sure the object that you want to hide is selected. Control H will hide it so that puts it out of the way so I needn't look at it for now. I'm also going to hide the buckle. These are very simple. They're just spheres. So just dragged and placed and sized how I wanted. Let's hide them. And I'm going to hide one of these because they're essentially the same. Ungroup or Control Shift G can now see that all it is is a box that I've then sized and then surrounded by cylinders that are holes oh, and by the way you can change from it being a hole to being solid you know very easily here and so really it's just a combination of those holes and that solid so group them together so let's get back to the buckle itself um, so what is this well you can sort of, um, by the way, you can always um, kind of do this process with somebody else's if they've given you access to their design, as I'm going to give to you. You can always do this, ungroup and see what there is. Um, and all this is is a bunch of holes. I gave them a radius, so that's how you get the, the curve around the edge. Really simple, so I'm going to just hide them using shift click then control h there we go i just happened to be able to remember that i had that at 14. why did i have it like that and then squish it down well partly because i wanted this nice big radius on the edge of the buckle but i didn't want the depth so this is a little workaround so make it the sort of size the profile you want from above like that and then flatten it the amount you know so i figured yeah make it seven mil and cut a bit off later there we go so there's the the final buckle uh the the holly um I, you know i don't know um quite like it we'll, we'll see how it works out and again one of the things i'm thinking about is whether or not to paint the holly perhaps really subtly um with just watercolor and then do a clear coat on the finish we'll see about that um it's gonna be interesting to see whether or not the spray paint comes out well oh <laughs> 
we don't want those. Um, <clears throat> right. Yeah. So um, this is that 3D print. Uh, how's it come out? Well, not too bad. You'll notice some strange artifacts. I'll probably do a close-up of that. Um, it looks like a, a, a drop of toffee. Mm. Well, it turns out that I hadn't done... In fact, you can see sort of darker areas where there were drops of toffee uh, beneath the purple. <laughs> beneath the good surface. And if that was another one up here, not good. Uh, what's going on there is that I hadn't done up my hot end properly. Oops. So we were getting uh, basic seepage that's setting on top of the, the, the heating block uh, and gradually cooking and then spilling over and, and dropping. But the print was going so well, I decided not to stop it. Um, and particularly as with this, we're going to obviously be painting it with stuff like that. Um, so, oh, you see my little 3D sample thing from Polymaker. Whoa, that's because I went to that TCT show. So it's worth going to these shows. You get freebies that are worth having. Um, <clears throat> so here it's come out. You can see that there's going to be some sculpting work done here and here. Um, not sure whether that was related to the problem or just failed to extrude at that point. Don't know. But yeah, good enough, I think, for what we need.